Well, hey there, how's it going? This is Seth Williams from retipster.com. In this video, we're going to talk about wetlands. Specifically, what are wetlands? How do you know when you're looking at a property that has wetlands on it? And also, for land investors like us, why wetlands can be a problem. So to kick this off, I'm just going to show you the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's definition of how wetlands are identified. And you can see here it says, wetlands are areas that are inundated or saturated by surface or groundwater at a frequency and duration, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm already falling asleep. That's really boring and kind of confusing. Essentially what it comes down to, if you take the time to read that through and really process what it's saying, and then also sort of read the follow-up explanation in this article, it's basically saying that wetlands are areas Areas where there is a frequent or prolonged presence of water either on the soil or near the surface of the soil that sort of creates a natural ecosystem where certain kinds of plants can grow and fish or wildlife can use it as a habitat. When most people think about wetlands, they think about things like this, like marshes where you see lots of grass that sort of grows up through the water, or swamps where it's kind of like a lake with trees growing up through it, or bogs like this, or fens like this. And the truth is, yes, these are all obvious examples of wetlands, and they're really easy to identify because you can just look at it and you can see the water or the vegetation that makes it pretty evident that there is some kind of wetland habitat going on here. But the trouble with this definition here is that it doesn't stop with swamps, marshes, bogs, or similar areas. Something most of us are familiar with or have heard of before are the Everglades in Florida which is just a massive wetland area down here. But the interesting thing about the Everglades is that depending on what time of the year you are looking at certain parts of the land, you may or may not see the presence of any water. It is entirely possible that you could be walking through the Everglades, or for that matter, any other wetland area, and you could be walking on solid, seemingly dry ground, and you would never guess that that is a wetland area. But, based on this definition here, it very well could be wetlands. Now, wetlands are really important to the world because they provide all kinds of benefits and just act as a natural resource for fish and animals and plants and even people. And we essentially need wetlands. We can't just destroy them or fill them in with dirt because they're in the way. These pieces of land are really valuable to the overall ecosystem and we don't want them to go away. And that's why pretty much anywhere you go in the United States, there are federal and state laws that prohibit you from destroying wetlands. You can't just go build a house in a wetland area, even if it looks dry. If it's considered wetlands, then it's pretty much off limits unless you get a permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and any state governing bodies that have to issue permits as well. So even though wetlands are a good thing to the world in general, they can kind of be a nightmare for land investors because if you buy a piece of land and find out after the fact that there are wetlands on that land, then pretty much whatever portion of the land is affected by those wetlands you're kind of stuck with and you can't do anything with it unless you somehow miraculously get the permits you need, which is not likely to happen because the government does not want you to destroy wetland areas. I actually experienced this myself uh, a few years back when I bought a property that was just a beautiful, amazing property over here on Lake Huron. It's right over here. So this was the parcel right here. It was 12 acres. On the surface, it was like just an amazing property because it was huge and it had about 500 feet of lake frontage. Everything about it looked great. I bought it for 4,500 bucks, which is a steal, but that's beside the point. The issue I encountered with this property was that after I bought it, I was informed that a huge portion of this property was considered wetlands so i had to find out pretty quick what portion of the property was actually buildable and usable for somebody to put a residence on the property so eventually after panicking for a few days i contacted a local wetlands consultant and I also got a surveyor to do a survey and after all that was done and i had paid a good chunk of change for everything i was able to get a few different things one of those things was this crudely drawn map indicating where the actual wetland area was on the property and where it stopped and where I could actually build something if I wanted 
to. And essentially, the wetlands covered this whole area. There was a little spot of land that had a slightly higher elevation and came out of that wetland area. And then there was also the spot way over by the road where you could build a house because this was not considered wetlands. Pretty much about 80% of these 12 acres was not buildable because of the presence of wetlands. And I also had this survey done which indicated that about half the property was covered in the 100-year flood line as well. So that was fairly unfortunate that I figured that out after I owned the property. Luckily, I was still able to sell the property for 45,000 bucks. So it didn't end up being a bad deal for me because I had bought it at such a stinking low price. But if those wetlands issues hadn't been there, I probably could have sold this thing for closer to like a few hundred thousand dollars because somebody would actually be able to build their house right on the shore overlooking the lake. But because of these issues, you couldn't do that. And it significantly impacted the value of the property when it came time to sell it. And even though I finally got the survey done and the wetlands delineation all finalized, even though it all worked out, this experience always kind of haunted me because I didn't ever want this to happen again where I would buy a property without really truly knowing what was going on with the wetlands situation and then finding out after the fact that, oh, this property isn't nearly as useful as you thought or it's potentially even completely useless because the entire thing is covered with wetlands and you didn't have a way to figure that out beforehand. To me, that was unacceptable. And luckily, I did eventually discover this website from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And the FWS has this thing called the Wetlands Mapper, which is a pretty incredible resource and it's free. And I'm gonna have a link to this page right beneath this video. Once you get to this page, you just have to go down here and click on the wetlands mapper and then go ahead and agree to the terms and conditions. And then it's gonna pull up this map and essentially what you can do is, you know, making sure that wetlands is checked. You can go ahead and zoom in on any property that you're looking for and find out whether or not there is any indication of a presence of wetlands on that property. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this property we're talking about here and we can see what it looks like and I'll show you how this works. Go ahead and zoom in here. Okay, so we can see it right here. This is the property right there. And as you can see, if I had known about this back before I bought this property, it would have been really easy to come right here and see this map, which shows very clearly that yes, there is some kind of presence of wetlands right there. And it does take up about 80% of the property. And granted, this map here from the National Wetlands Inventory does not necessarily show the exact same thing as the one that I got from the U.S. Army Corps, but both of the maps do agree that there is the presence of wetlands on this property. Now the nice thing is you can also download this KML file which is updated on a regular basis and if you've got the desktop version of Google Earth on your computer this can work with that software to show you all the exact same information in a way that's a little bit more flexible and easy to work with. So let's go ahead and download this and by the way I'm going to have a link to this page beneath this video as well in case you want to check this out. But once you've downloaded that you just have to go ahead and open it up and I'm just going to go ahead and drag this right onto the Google Earth window. And as soon as we do that, you'll notice that there's all this new information that pops up over here in your sidebar. And you'll also notice a lot more color here in your map. If we go ahead and zoom back in on that same property, we can see pretty much the exact same thing. And there you go. You'll see pretty much the exact same information. It's just that now it's in Google Earth, not in this web browser over here on the other page. So either which way you want to do it is fine. And something you'll kind of notice if you sort of zoom out and look at the entire continental United States you'll notice that there are certain regions around the country that have a lot more color than others. Places like North and South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, some spots in New England, and then if you follow pretty much the entire East Coast all the way down to Florida and then much of the South, there's a lot of areas here that have a much higher likelihood of being impacted by wetlands. And of course, if you sort of draw a line right down the middle of the country, most of the Western United States is pretty clear of wetlands. You're obviously gonna see little spots here and there so it's not something you can completely ignore but for the most part if you're buying and selling land in this area of the country wetlands is going to be much less of a concern than if you are working over in these areas of the country I think pretty much wherever you're working in the US this isn't something you should generally ignore this is something you should probably be looking at before buying any property but as you can see in the western United States it's just a much less common issue that you'll have to encounter now just to be 
completely clear about this, using this kind of mapping tool is not the same thing as actually hiring a wetlands consultant and or getting the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers onto your property to do their own delineation and find out where the presence of wetlands are and actually draw the boundaries themselves. As you can see, what this map tells me is not exactly the same thing as what this drawing told me. It was pretty similar, but I wouldn't necessarily take this as the gospel truth. In fact, if you actually look at the data limitations, exclusions, and precautions that you have to agree to before you even use this, it spells out pretty clearly that there are no guarantees with this kind of mapping service. It says that the service's objective is to produce reconnaissance level information on the location, type, and size of these resources. A margin of error is inherent in the use of imagery, thus detailed on the ground inspection of any particular site may result in revision of the wetland boundaries or classification established through image analysis. What I take away from this is that these maps are not like the final word on if and when there are wetlands present. It's just sort of a indicator. So if you're just looking for like any obvious red flags on a property, this is a pretty good place to start, but it's not like a 100% guarantee until you actually have somebody go out to the property and inspect it on site. But with that said, if you're just looking for the fastest and easiest way to see any potential wetland activity on your property, be sure to check out this website. Again, I'm going to link to both pages beneath this video so you can either check it out in your web browser or check it out in Google Earth. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you next time.